Hello, and welcome to the video that's going to solve all your issues. Feel free to bookmark this video if you forget how to do this later. Right now, I'll show you the process of modding PAL World, and I'll explain the who, what, why, how, and where along the way. First, we need to get to the files of our game directory, and how we do that is we go to Settings, we hit Manage, and then we hit Browse Local Files. Now, when trying to find mods, Nexus Mods is actually one of the best and safest ways to find them. Before we download them, we want to make sure we download this modding API and install it. At the time of this recording, it's version 301. And don't worry if you have mods that require an older version of this, they'll automatically be compatible with this newer version. I'll leave this GitHub page in the description below for you, as well as this example mod that we're going to do here in a second. But first, what we're going to want to download on this GitHub page is this file right here. This zip file. And as we open that up, we'll see that um, we have a bunch of API files in here. We're actually going to use all of these. So what I want to do is I want to go into PAL, Binaries, Win64, and you're going to highlight all of these and drag this into your Win60, right into the root of your Win64. Next, an important part is we're going to open up this any file. It's going to be UES, um, sorry, UE4SS. And if it's not at the bottom, we can always go ahead, right click and hit refresh. So that way it reorganizes the file. And very important, what we need to do is we need to find this right here. Be use uh, object array cache. We need to make sure we set this to false. If we do not, then some mods will actually immediately crash our game. Once you've done that, go ahead and hit Control S or just File Save, and then you'll you're done with the any file. Believe it or not, that's going to be the hardest part. Now, what we want to go ahead and do is go back to this PAL uh, directory right here. We're going to go into Content, we're going to go into Packs, and we're going to create this folder right here. So we can go ahead and click New, and Capital L Logic, and then M Mods. And believe it or not, that's going to be the hardest part done. Now that we have the actual API installed and this file right here, it boils down to having Lua mods installed into the binaries folder and mods that need a .pak file installed into the logic mods folder. Very rarely will a mod actually need both Lua and pack files, but in this case, we'll go ahead and show you how to install both of them. So first, I want to start with the Lua file. We're going to go ahead and hit manual download. And then we'll just download this. Hit slow download. Okay, so now we have that in our downloads folder. Uh, and in parentheses, it says Lua, so that's nice. So we're going to go back to files. And we're also going to make sure that we download the pack version of, of this as well. Okay, so now both of those are downloaded. We have the pack and the Lua. A lot of the times, if you can't really tell what a mod is, you can always go ahead and once you've installed the mod and have it downloaded, you can open the zip file go into that mod, and if it starts with scripts and has a Lua file in it, then your best bet is you're going to actually go ahead and put this into your mods folder. For a creative menu, however, what we're going to go ahead and do is, obviously, this is going to be a Lua-based version of the mod. So right at the directory of the zip folder, we want to have the entire folder, and we want to throw that into our mods folder that we've created for the modding API. That's not all though, because what we want to do is just click that to highlight it and copy the name. And we'll see what this mods txt folder is for. As soon as we open this mods txt folder, we can paste the name in here and we want to do this as one for enabled. Make sure there's a space between the mod name and the actual true false boolean, which is a one or zero. After that, we can save the text file and close it. Next, what we'll want to do is we'll go back to the PAL directory. We'll go into content, packs, and then logic mods. And as you see, I've already have some cool mods in there. We're going to go to our downloads and we'll already have uh, this pack version of the mod for the creative menu. And that will be as simple as just dragging this pack uh, file into our logic mods. And that mod is now installed. And as soon as that's done, that is good to go. Right now, we are now clear to go ahead and open up Steam and hit play. Now notice that the default button to actually open this mod menu and game, which is this, this is a creative mod, uh, is F1. So we're gonna go in game, and as soon as that we hit F1, we'll notice that the mod is working. Now I'm currently overweight, which is fine, but we're gonna go ahead and spawn something that we do not have um, that would be minuscule to my playthrough, just to see that the mod is working. So as you can see, I don't have ice organs in here. Right, so we'll actually have this open and we'll go to items. Uh, we can search ice organ 
and there it is right there and we can see how much we actually want to spawn in so if you want to spawn in like a ridiculous amount of you can and all of a sudden we have 982 ice organs so the mod is actually working now we want to make sure is that we download a mods that are going to be usually client side um, at the current moment, I am now playing on a server, uh, which I have permission to play, uh, with mods on. Um, and as you can see, um, not really all of my mods are preventing me from joining the server. Um, my map unlocker still works client side, although I still have to actually discover these. Uh, if I go and, uh, go up towards a, um, a pal, my pal info mod still works beautifully fine on the mod. So... A lot of mod installing um, does boil down to a fundamental understanding of what will work client side only and what will prevent you from joining a server. The reason we should be very cautious about what mods we download and whether or not it will prevent us joining a servers is if you are a player that does join servers and you download uh, mods that prevent you from joining or just bug out when you do join multiplayer servers that you're not the host of, um, then the alternative to actually join is deleting the mod to uninstall it um, and then remembering how to install it later on, which I feel is a hassle. So to circumvent that, a lot of the times when I'm installing any mod at all, I'll make sure that it's something that I probably can play on a server with so I don't have to go through the hassle later on of managing mods. I really do hope you guys found this video helpful. Again, all the links that you'll need will be in the description below. If you really want to help me out, I did upload a video a while ago that didn't do as well as I thought it would for the effort I put into it. So if you give it a watch, I guarantee you it'll make you laugh. Anyways, thank you so much for watching. See you in the next one.